Yeah, right here is Heaton Flats. Will Heaton's mine is down, oh, I'd say about a quarter mile down here. Maybe an eighth of a mile down here. But there's another guy that mined here after Will Heaton, and his name was Oliver Justice. He was here from 1870 to 1929. Now, he mined this area across over here. This is Dead Man's Hill. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute, but Oliver Justice is buried where I'm going to try to take you guys back here to Iron Fork. I'll show you roughly where he is. They call that Dead Man's, it's right across from uh, Will Heaton's area. They call that Dead Man's Hill because years ago, many, many, many years ago, a guy was with a pick prospecting up around, punching holes, and he busted into a coyote hole. He dug back, and there was a guy buried back there. I guess it went back about 15, 20 feet, and he was buried back in there. And he was nothing but bones. There wasn't much left to bury. But inside, there was a satchel next to him with four or five gold nuggets. And uh, so it's been known as Dead Man's Hill ever since. It's right across from Will Heaton's area where they built the campground, where the pines are. Dead Man's Hill. Towards the end of the 18th century, I've read there was a tribe, the Gabrielinos. There was a group of them that lived down by Recon. And... Uh, I guess there were about 30 of them, is what I've read. Now besides those were uh, Gabrielinos. Besides those 30 Gabrielinos that were living down there, they were the last of the ones. They were the ones that got massacred for showing too many people where the gold was being found. Now besides them, there were four other Indians that they knew about that lived, oh, from Cattle, Cattle Canyon Bridge up to about Heaton Flats, maybe a little bit more uh, north. But their name was Jose Mania, Don Felipe, Troubadour, Rodriguez, and Luis Sena. They're from a tribe down by Sonora, Mexico, what's known as Sonora, Mexico now. Now, Luis Sena, I believe it was, got really sick one time with pneumonia and almost died. So he told this guy, um, I will repay you with more gold than you can possibly imagine. And uh, they just blew it off like, yeah, sure, they will. sure you will. Well, one night in the middle of the night, he came and knocked on the guy's door and said, get two days worth of food in your, your gear. And he took them up to Iron Fork, where I'm going to take you. And he showed him this trail. This trail went along and uh, gradually the ground turned to quartz and came before a big mountain. Well, there was a fifth Indian on top of this mountain waving them back. Without saying anything, Luis Senna turned around and went back. And he told the guy, I'm sorry, but we can, we can never come here again on your honor. Don't ever come here. And he didn't. But his son or his grandson went back during high school days and couldn't find the place. It was too overgrown. And it's been lost ever since. There's a documentary, seven-part documentary on YouTube here. At the end of the documentary, there's an address. You can actually write them and buy the full section of what I did. And uh, they refer you to where to get some information in books. But the documentary tells all these facts that I'm telling you now. I'm just taking you and showing you the places as they are in modern day. So the link will be below this video. Okay, here's the thing. I probably got another four miles to go. But I'm, I've got a headache. Just one of those ones. That's a headache. And I feel like I'm going to vomit. Which is heat stroke. I've had it before, I've had it here before. So it's three o'clock, three, 3 15. I've got about four and a half, five hours out. I'm gonna get out because if I don't, I'm just gonna get worse, I feel really bad. So I'm gonna write the information, the details that I was gonna tell you and I'll show you a few of the spots. But back here in Iron Fork, there's a spot where there's a guy, his name will be going across right here. He homesteaded way back where I started, and he's buried back here at Iron Fork. I'll tell you the story about that, and I'll tell you where I learned the story, and I'll put a link to it down below. But as for this, I, I dumped my camelback, all three liters. I'm going out with a Gatorade and one water. I'm, I'm, just, I don't feel good. I feel really bad, and and, and I, any, if I go anymore, I'm really pushing it, and, and I'm back here alone, and. 
safest thing and the best thing to do is to get out or, or rest. And I can't rest here because I'm right in a slide area. I mean, there's some great places to, to camp, but you're, look at anything could happen, you're dead meat. I'm dead meat, not you. So uh, I'd have to go up another mile or two and I, I really don't feel like I can make it. If I go back this way, the bridge is right where that comes down on the other side. From there, I've got five miles out. I think I can make that, it's all downhill. So on my way back out, I'll give you some details and then everything will be down below in the, de in the uh, details of the video. Sorry about that, but yeah. with heat stroke, you'll get a headache, a very bad headache. From the back of your neck to your temples, just throbbing. I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but that's what I've experienced. And then on top of that, you get a dryness to the mouth a little bit, but if you drink, you vomit. You can't hold any liquids down. So if you're experiencing that, you need some kind of electrolytes or some salt tablets. I've, I've taken two. I've taken both about a half an hour ago. Hopefully it'll start to take effect. But I mean, it's, it's better safe than sorry. You look at when I'm facing to go down. Martin and I and Stephen and I went to. If you go up there, you go over that second one, you go back over the third one. Well, the waterfall is right over the second one, but we went over the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. We went all the way back, way back there. Skull Rock is way back there, too. It's quite a trek, though. But look at that spring over there. It's a big spring over there going up. A lot of water. I'll have to check that one out someday. You can see it comes all the way from the top. Some big lodgepole pines up there. We interrupt this documentary for a public announcement. My gosh. See that guy up there? Well, ahead of him is the almost naked female hiker. <laughs> I don't believe what she was wearing or actually not wearing. It is a beautiful day. <laughs> The female Sasquatches. Anyway, back to the story. Okay, everybody in El Doradoville, which was the pen, the gold penning town that popped up back here, everybody there knew and respected these four Native Americans because of their knowledge of the land, food, how to raise goats, where to find the gold, how to survive, how to prosper out here, not just survive but prosper. So they all respected them. And because of this respect, Troubadour told Sedley's father or grandfather, I'm saying that because I don't know which one it is, you left the watch the document, told him, I'm sorry, but you must honor this wish and never come back here again. Never bring anybody here. They don't want us here. Apparently, there was a fifth Indian, maybe more, but there was a guard on the top of that rock flagging them back. And he told his his fellow Native American, go back, don't bring him here. So, Sedley honored that and never went back. But Sedley Peck, when he grew up to be a teenager, his dad had told him about this, they went back looking for this on numerous occasions when they were in high school. And uh, he said they never found it. They went over the first and the second, but they, they found the quartz, but they never found the mine. So it's been, it's been something of a, a ghost ever since. People have always been looking for it. I know two miners back here that watched that documentary and they've been looking for it for about two years. Eventually somebody will find it. But uh, Sedley Peck, I think he talks about if I remember right, he spent the night over there 
And he said, if there were ever any spirits in the canyon, that's where he felt them the most. And by the way, that's where, oh, I got a cramp in my leg, oh my God. Wow, that was a bad cramp. Oh, right, wow. Where the bottom of your pocket, your front pocket is, right in the joint of my leg and my hip right there. Whew, hurt. Anyway, so, he said they never went back there again. Like I say, people are still looking for that to this day. I climbed down to the canyon floor. Oh, I'm getting some cramps in my other leg now. So, these four Indians lived their lives in the canyon right up until the flood of 1936. Um, they never wanted for anything. They always had clothes, food, shelter, one raised goats. Oh, I'll show you his place in a minute. Um, and let's see. Uh, I'll tell you some more information about the place. You know what? My nephew works for Sony. He's really good with the computer. He's developed a few apps he's trying to sell to Google. But they say, you know, they're too risky. They, they're not, the, the public is not ready for these, these apps yet. You gotta wait a few years until they're ready for it. It's too dangerous. And he's yet to try them out. But he installed it on my phone. So you know what? I think I'm gonna try it out. Because by the time I get out of here, the place I wanna show you is gonna be dark. And there's no way you'll be able to see. As you can see, the sun's about dipping now. So, okay, Eric. I'm gonna try that app, man. If I, if I get lost in oblivion, hey, anybody who finds my gear, you're welcome to it. Put it to good use. And if you find this camera, upload the video. <laughs> Let me find a little spot to put the camera on a tripod. Okay, okay, Eric, you try it out. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Okay, this is where it took place. Okay, this is right across from the the Oaks campground. Now this campground didn't always exist, it was never here. But up there on that hill, one of the Indians up there, Troubadour Rodriguez from Sonora, Mexico area. I'm not sure exactly what tribe that would be, but he lived up there and up at top he had he raised alfalfa. He had goats up way up atop. Goats and alfalfa. He had a mine somewhere down here. He had a house up there and he hunted small game with a slingshot. He got some of those quail with the yuccas and the lightning bolts and the <laughs> bow bearings in the bloodstream, high iron. Anyway, that might be the mine right there. I tend to believe that might be what's left over from the mine. Make sure to send a copy of this to Google. You're set for life, buddy. <laughs> and that's the place I was telling you about. So, I'm gonna walk back there now. It's gonna take me a few more hours, at least. And then drive down the mountain. Okay, now this prospect, Oliver Justice. Now he mined Will Heaton's old stomping grounds. Billy Heaton. Even when Billy Heaton was there, he was there also. And then Billy Heaton died. And Oliver Justice kept going for a few more years until 1929 when he passed on. Now why they buried him back at Iron Fork, I don't know. Maybe he requested that. Maybe he heard about those Indians because at the time the Indians were alive and well. So that was before the flood. So at the time he may have heard that and wanted to be buried over there. I guess it was some kind of sacred ground or something. And I wish I could have made it back there, but uh, I will. Uh, maybe Martin or one of the other guys will come with me. It'd be cool to have two or three guys, just in case something happens. That's a very remote, uh, 
hiking spot. In this canyon, besides for every once in a while seeing a piece of the road and the bridge to nowhere as remnants from last yesteryear, from, uh, last hundred years ago, if you look like over there, look, let's see, see those? Those are telephone poles. That's when the electric was actually running power back here. There, every once in a while, you'll see them up, and that's the old power line road. Now that power line road is where they put the poles in. That power line road exists to, to this day. In a few places it's good, but no more than a couple hundred feet, and then there's nowhere to go. Now, it used to be in the 70s, you could catch that. I read John W. Robinson in the 70s, he used to catch that power line road just, uh, let's see, southwest of the bridge to nowhere. He used to catch that, and you could walk that through the narrows in a full rainy season or when the snows melt, and you could, because narrow, the narrows are impossible to pass nowadays um, without serious high risk. A guy named Kevin, he takes, and, and also Backpacker Dave, they take the one helicopter. That's from the uh, Bridge Nor. That's the owners locking up for the night and flying out. And they that parked that helicopter in a little turnout. Just south, uh, south east of the bridge to nowhere. They land that back there. Now back to this. Uh, Kevin and Dave, uh, Backpacker Dave and I, I don't think uh, the other guy, Kenny, Kenny said I'll never do that, but they go on one that's way up at the top, a little goat trail that I, I've gone on it for a few hundred yards and it's sketchy. I mean, it is sketchy. You're walking on stuff like this where it's slate and it, a couple of my videos, I'm on it. Where I found those mines, I'm on it. Now anyway. That trail used to go all the way through the Narrows, and John W. Robinson used to take that through. But then people, miners down below, didn't like people above watching them, so they went up there and, and shovels and stuff and, and took it out. I think 77, 78, they took that thing out. No longer exists. This canyon is full of stuff. Everybody thinks East Fork, Bridge to Nowhere. There's so much more. The Bridge to Nowhere, it's, it's just a minor a little thing i mean there's so much to see back here so much to explore you go up stuff like this it leads to caves and mines and it's all kinds of cool things back here look at that i never noticed that nobody's ever named that rock that i know of but if you look at that it looks like it looks like feet a tail a body more feet a dinosaur's head or yeah it looks like a dinosaur a tail it looks like a dinosaur with a man with an arm down below. Wow, look at that. A little alien gray holding a leash to a dinosaur. Swan Rock? You got nothing on alien gray with a leash around a raptor. Look at that. That's raptor rock tamed by an alien gray. How cool is that? I found that. I named that. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but if you look, look. You see the head right there. You can see the, the eye. Look at that. You can see the eye and the mouth. And then the bony neck, vertebrae, going down to the body, the hip joint, the tail, the legs. Look at that. And the arms. And then you see the alien gray right there. Look at that. Wow. Okay, we got Swan Rock. Now I dubbed the Raptor Rock. Okay, about those Indians, I remember the name of the tribe. The name of the tribe is the Yukai Indians from down by what's known as Sonora, Mexico today. The Yukai Indians. Like I say, if you guys are interested in this canyon at all and learning stuff about it, the man to go to, John W. Robinson, and then another guy made a documentary on YouTube that's equally as good um, link down below. I forget the guy's username, but it's a, it's a documentary on Sedley Peck, Remembering the Man. And I, I guarantee you, if you sit down and watch one, you're going to watch two. Then you're going to watch three. I sat down and watched all seven of them back to back. 
and it's amazing. Most of the, a lot of the stuff I had already heard, but some of it was all new to me. And I'm going to buy that entire interview. Sedley Peck was very old, 1962. He sat down and he talked to historical people for I think two, two and a half hours. And he told this entire story. And uh, the guy that did this documentary, he used to prospect back here in 1973. He found a lot of gold. But he got in contact with Sedley Peck's wife after he died and got clearance to see a bunch of his artifacts. Old tomahawks, arrowheads, stuff left over from yesterday. Oh, I feel like my legs are just like an automatic pilot right now. And if I stop for a second, it's just this incredible pain. No energy, but there's the Sheep Mountain Bridge. On the back is the old uh, Swan Rock. But I don't need to show you no stinking Swan Rock. I've already showed you Raptor Rock. Look at this, I'm pretty close. But I was just feeling like I'm about to go ride with the Cartwrights. And uh, look at this. These crows come up and land right here. Look at that. It is said that the crow comes to take you to the next world. At least that's what Brandon Lee's show told us. <laughs> Are they here to pick me up? I'm gonna go ride with Adam, Haas, Little Joe, and Ben Cartwright. The way I feel right now, I really wouldn't mind. <laughs> uh, to and back on this particular trip, I've only done about six and a half, six, six and a half in, six, six and a half out. Oh, look at that spider. But prior to that, this morning, I got here last night and uh, spent the night heating flats, like I said. I didn't get any sleep hardly. I woke up early, went down, started picking up trash. So it's about a quarter mile in, and about a half mile back through the river. But constantly bending down, picking up, walking on those rocks, carrying about 70 pounds of bottles and another trash bag, and then the combined weight of the other one. I mean, we carried a lot of trash out. A lot of bending up squats. The squats are probably what got me. That's why my muscles and my legs. Anyway, and then after everybody split, I went ahead and changed my pack out and headed up here and thought I could knock out one more hike the same day. But no, it knocked me out. Okay, as we've been shown over and over again, Ancient aliens had visited this planet. The Egyptians, the Mayans, as far as recent as the Roswell crash, there have been numerous sightings since now. Could it be that the asteroid that hit this Earth to extinguish the dinosaurs was bumped? Or could it be a photon, photon torpedo or something in this? Now, in Chariot of the Gods, it shows this time and time and time again. Now, could, uh, could it be that there was one dinosaur left here, it was a raptor, and one alien gray came in, leashed it, harnessing its power, taking it out, thus becoming gods to the genetically engineered gabberlinos, proving themselves gods, or thunderbirds, if you will, and having the gabberlinos do their bidding and gather their gold. Now, they engineered it into this rock, a pictograph, if you will, for generations after generations after generations to see and worship these thunder gods. Or could it be, I've just been watching too much ancient aliens. Fuck's sake, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> see you guys in the next one, man. <laughs>